Hello, this is Sal. Today I will configure OSPF MD5 authentication for secure routing updates. But first I will configure just uh, OSPF on the routers. Uh, this way the network, uh, the traffic when it moves between the networks, it will be moving uh, in a, a clear text, you know, not authenticated and not secure or encrypted. And in this video, the NTP server will be the master. I will configure authentication on the NTP server and the routers. I will configure the routers to allow the software clock to be synchronized by NTP to the time server. Also, I will configure the routers to periodically update the hardware clock with the time learned from NTP. The syslog server will provide message logging in this activity. I will configure the routers to identify the router host that will receive logging messages. I will need to configure timestamp service for logging on the routers, displaying the correct time and date in syslog messages is vital when using syslog to monitor a network. I will configure router 3 later on this video to be managed securely using SSH instead of telnet. Now I will configure uh, uh, OSBF on the routers and then after that I will configure the MD5 authentication enable configure terminal router OSBF 1 start with network 1 with 192.168.1.0 255 area 0 network 2 for the next 92 168.2.0 with a wildcard subnet mask of 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.255 on area 0 third network 10.1.1.0.3 area 0 so we are done configuring OSPF on router 1 now moving to router 2 Enable, configure terminal, router OSPF 1, network 10.1.1.0, 3 area 0, network 10.2.2.0 with the wildcard submit mask of 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.3 area 0. And as you can see here, and uh, adjacency between the neighbors have been established between router 1 and router 2. Now I will move to router 3. Enable, configure terminal, router OSPF 1, network of 10.2.2.0, and the one of net mask card of 3, area 0. Network 192.168.3.0 uh, public wildcard of 0 .0 0 0.0.255 area 0. So now I configured the OSV app on the routers. Let's see if we have connectivity between router B and uh, NTP server. See if we can't ping it from here. Ping 192.168.1.10 And yes we can. Now, let's configure a MD5 authentication on the routers to secure the, the network. Take it from here on router 1. Router OSBF1 area zero authentication message digest now for the interface serial zero one zero this interface here facing router two enter ip os uh, ospf message digest 
and key ID one and the five and the OSPF password I'll choose for this is Cisco. Now we are done here with the router one. Let us work on router two. And you, as you can see, it lost the adjacency now, but now when we configure the interface facing router one, the adjacency is gonna be back. Exit here. Oh, sorry, router OSPF one. Uh, area zero, authentication, message digest. Interface S01. Zero IP OSPF message digest. The key is one MD5 and the password of Cisco. Now let's do the other interface. Now the adjacency is loading to full, and the loading is done with the neighbor uh, relationship between router one and router two. Has been established. Let's do the other interface. Uh, interface. Sorry. Uh, router. Exit from here. Router. Oh. OSPF. We shouldn't do this, but I'll do it anyway. Uh, area zero. Authentication. Message. Digest. Now. Interface as zero slash one one IP OSPF message digest the key one and the five and Cisco is the password. We are done with router two. Now let's move to router three. Interface facing router two. Configure terminal router OSPF one area zero authentication message digest interface serial zero slash one one ip ospf message digest the key one and the five and the password of cisco <coughs> So now let's run this command show IP uh, OSPF interface. As you can see here showing us the, the 0001, 011. This uh, interface is offline protocol is up. Internet address is 10.2.2.1. This interface in this site. So now let's uh, try to ping from uh, PCB to the same to ping NTP server and now the difference between this ping and the ping before the one before it wasn't secured but this time the traffic is moving between the PC through the serial ports to the NTP server is secured and authenticated and encrypted now uh, on the NTP server let, uh, let me check the NTP authentication uh, go service NTP it's on let me turn enable this and the key for authentication and one and the password I will choose also Cisco and NTP is on. So now let me on router one, router two, and router three. I will configure them as NTP clients. So let's go back to router one here. Uh, exit. Uh, NTP server. The IP address of the NTP server is 192.168.1.10. Here on router one, router two. Exit here, uh, NTP server is 192.168.1.10. And 
and the same I'll do on router 3 configure terminal and DP server 192.168.1.10 uh, let me run this uh, command show NTP status but still the clock is unsynchronized the clock on router 3 now is still unsynchronized. Uh, let me run on router 1 this command uh, uh, NTP update calendar. And I'll do the same with router 2 NTP update calendar, the same on router 3. Configure terminal NTP update calendar. Now let me check the time here. Exit, show time. Sorry, show clock. And it's showing us the time based on the time on the NTP server. Let me see what is the time here. It is 4.33 a.m. But let us do it. It's a.m. But it's 3.03. Now, on uh, the serve uh, routers, router 1, I will configure NTP authentication. Configure terminal, NTP authentication, authenticate, then, eight, ambiguous, NTP authenticate. Now, NTP, trusted key, and we want to trust key 1, NTP, authentication, key is 1, MD5, and Cisco. I will do the same on router 2. NTP authenticate NTP trusted key and the key one address is one NTP authentication authentication key is one MD five and here the authentication key is Cisco, as we configured on the NTP server. I'll do the same on router 3. NTP authenticate, authenticate. NTP trusted key and trust key number 1. NTP authentication key 1 MD5. Now, when done configuring the NTP authentication, I will configure the routers to timestamp log messages. So I'll go on router one, and a service, timestamp, log, date time, uh, millisecond, milli. This is on router 1. I'll do the same on router 2. Service, timestamp, log, date time, millisecond, millisecond. I'll make sure that I do the same on router 3.
service timestamp for log date time by the milliseconds. I mean milliseconds. Uh, now I'll configure the routers to log messages to the syslog server. Now when I'm done with the, this configuration, we will receive messages which display on the console telling us that the logging has started. So let's start with router 1. Logging. And we will be logging to host. And what's our host here? The syslog server of 192. 168.2.20 and on router let me exit here now it's showing the logging and it is going to take our logging to host number uh, on an IP address 192.168.2.20 so logging on router 1 and this is how you can check your logs on your console on your uh, on your display. Let's do the same with router 2. Uh, logging host and our log syslog server on 192.168.2.20. I'll do the same on router 3. Logging host 192.168.2.20. 2.20 exit and here also I'll do exit and it's showing us that it has been initiated log messages can be generated on the server by executing commands on the routers like if I open a port or shut it it will show on the log server I will run a few activities on the routers and view them on the uh, syslog server. Now for the syslog server, let us see any activities here on the service. Syslog is showing us a few. And now let me clear it for now. And uh, on router 1, let me create uh, a loopback interface loop back zero shut it no shut and let's go to router 2 and configure terminal interface zero one zero shut no shut and let us check the syslog server and it is showing here by the time and by the host Okay, now let's, uh, as you can see here, we configured the NTP server and for the routers to get the synchronizer time from the NTP server. Before that, I configured the OSPF and which I said that uh, the traffic will be moving between the network and a clear text and we configured OSPF MD5 authentication and we enabled the logging uh, the syslog server and enable the uh, to send the logs to the syslog server i cre created some events here to see if it will be logged there and this is uh, a useful troubleshooting that you need the exact time when you uh, try to check a, an issue happen in the network uh, checking the syslog server activity and you need the exact time now uh, I will configure router 3 here, this guy, uh, to support SSH connection. First, I will configure a domain name, uh, and I'll call it uh, ccnasecurity.com. Configure terminal, IP domain name. And here telling us the default, default uh, domain name, CCN, 
and a security Now I'll create a user for logging to the SSH server. Here on router 3, a user name, I'll call him admin, which is not a good choice, but for this example, a privilege, we will give this admin privilege 15, and secret password also of admin, just, you know, to make it easy to now I will configure the BTY lines on the router. Line BTY 0 to 4. Login local. And the tran transport input. We want it only to support SSH. Exit here, IP, SSH, we want only version 2. Now, time for the key. I will run uh, a command on router 3, so any existing key pairs on the router should be erased. And do it this way, crypto key zero eyes RSA and showing us uh, no signature RSA keys found in configuration now I will make sure no RSA key encryption was uh, it is telling us that no RSA key encryption was found and now let me generate an RSK, uh, RSA key encryption key pair the router uh, uses uh, the RSA key pair for authentication and encryption of a transmitted SSH data I will do the configuration using the RSA keys with modulus uh, 1024 and we do it this way crypto e this time generate rsa and we want it 100,024 exit here let me run this command show ip ssh Showing us here that SSH is enabled, version 2, authentication timeout, 120 seconds of authentication, ret uh, retry 3. Uh, okay, let me here try to telnet first. I know that we put the uh, input, the transport, the input just to support only SSH, just let us give it uh, a try for this example. Here we will tell it to tell it 192.68.3.1 connection closed by because we configured the router to accept only SSH. So now let us run SSH from PC B to the router SSH link admin and to 10 dot two dot two dot one password admin and we are able to SSH or establish a connection on PC here to the router. First we uh, configure the domain for the router and uh, then we configure the VTY line for SSH and now we are able to connect from PCB to SSH. Let me try to do it from router 1 to SSH to router 3 exit exit here 
SSH link admin ten dot two dot two dot one and the password of admin and as you can see here we are able to uh, I hope in uh, this video that you learned something you know as I said that we configured OSPF and then uh, MD5 authentication for the OSPF configurations we configured the NTP server made sure that the routers will sync their time to the NTP server and we configured the syslog made sure that any event will be locked to the syslog server and then the SSH on router 3 and we uh, checked that we were able to connect from TCB to the router and from router 1 to router 3. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please, if you liked it, if you learned something, subscribe to my channel and hit like and I will see you soon in my next video. Thank you.